Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty God, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Mercifully give us faith to know that as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. King, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees it and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. And his and all the people see his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. For you are the Lord most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Light has sprung up for the righteous, and joyful gladness for those who are true hearted.
for his disciples. And then he said, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today is the seventh and final Sunday in the Easter season, which means that this week, leading up to next Sunday, Pentecost, is still the Easter season. So kids, you can still have Easter chocolate. Okay? <laughs> Let your parents know, there's no excuses, you could have some chocolate eggs, if you can find any still on sale. They'll be a little waxy at this point. And yet, there's something missing up here. You may notice it. Its presence is a little bit, you know, obscured, or its absence is obscured, rather, by the fact that there is a camera and a microphone there, and hello to everyone on Facebook. But, or YouTube later. Um, but normally, standing there would be the Paschal candle in the Easter season. But, you know, it's been three years since we've done this. You'll be familiar, though, with the fact that on the Feast of the Ascension, the Paschal candle is extinguished and it no longer appears in the sanctuary. Because that Paschal candle is a symbol of the risen Christ walking amongst the disciples, physically present to them, and at the Ascension, he no longer is. And when we tell these stories, we remember in a unique way. We don't remember just with our heads. We don't remember and think, oh yes, because obviously none of us can remember 2,000 years ago. Frankly, I can barely remember two weeks ago, but I certainly wasn't around 2,000 years ago. None of us were, so we can't remember the way we think of that, and we can't even remember the way we ask school children to remember the great world wars for which they also were not present. It's not a mental act. When we remember, we reenact like we do here every week. When we rehearse the words of Jesus at the Last Supper, we remember, we make him a member of the company again. We reenact what happened and he is truly present to us in the sacrament. And so when we remember in the Easter season, when we remember, we live again what was. I mentioned some Sundays ago that we live in that sort of between place, right? Where we are telling stories that are thousands of years old and looking forward to a future that will happen when we do not know and we live in between the two. Well, this is an example of it. Yes, Christ died and rose and ascended. That's true all year round now. 
but in a unique way we live those moments. And so we put ourselves into the life of Jesus, into the life of the disciples. And so from our midst, liturgically from our midst, he is ascended. He has returned to the Father. I saw a meme today that celebrates the Ascension Day, the day that Jesus began working from home. It takes a little while to set in. And so he's not present in the way he was in the rest of the Easter season, symbolized by the Paschal candle being gone. And yet he has not sent the Spirit, the Spirit which will descend upon Pentecost and fill the church with the fire of God. That hasn't happened either yet. And so in this 10-day period between Ascension and Pentecost, we are rootless. We are orphaned in a way. What will we do? Our Messiah has ascended, but the Spirit has not come. He has promised to be with us, but he feels very distant. The Paschal candle no longer stands here. Now, you may have heard me say in years previous that in a very real way, his ascension has made him closer. Because when he was on earth walking physically among the disciples, you had to go to a particular place to meet him. You had to go to Judea, to Nazareth, to Jerusalem, to wherever he happened to be in order to talk to him. Now, wherever you are, whenever you are, he is with you. Compare it to the sun. Its rays, well, it's a little cloudy right now, but its rays are falling upon this good earth here in Glen Williams. They're also falling in Manitoba, a little more slanted in Manitoba than here. They're falling in St. John's. They're falling in, in the UK and in France and Italy. They're falling on the Ukraine. The rays of the sun are falling on all of the earth that is turned to it because its distance allows that. So Jesus' removal to heaven shouldn't be seen as him leaving us, but in a sense becoming more present to us because heaven is all around. It isn't a physical place. It is separated from us only by prayer. So that's the first thing to take from these 10 days in which we're a little lost. The other is that these 10 days could be metaphor for our world right now. A little lost. The world feels not a little lost, quite lost. Ovalde, Sandy Hook, Ukraine, political divisions that, that make enemies out of friends and family. The fact that in, in our town, on the main street, one of the churches is shuttered to become an optometrist, another one is uh, in threat of closing down, and yet there's cannabis stores up and down. Lost, I think, adequately describes us right now. We don't have the confidence of Jesus walking among us whom we can reach out and touch. And yet, it feels as if there's no spirit, there's no fire. Where are we? How can we be in this time? Our Lord prays, in today's gospel, that we may be one. And that is a great call for ecumenism, to overcome the ridiculous differences which we sow between ourselves and to recognize that even if we do church a bit different than they do church and they do church different than they do church, we are all one in Christ. But also he prays that we may be in the world but not of it, not of the world. When Jesus ascended, he took with him humanity. His risen body was fully human. And he took that humanity into heaven and thus took us into heaven. Thus took what it is to be human, the, the flesh and blood, 
the mundaneness of the body and elevated it to the status of God, took our humanity into heaven, and there would draw our, our attention, our minds, our intention, our wills. How are we in the world but not of it? Theologically, it's known as indifferencia, and indifference, and we think of indifference as a bad thing, like, yeah, well, whatever. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about having eyes fixed on that which is eternal, even as we walk through that which is temporal. Again, I, I go back to a couple of weeks ago to, to attempt to live this life as if we were in heaven, as if the kingdom was accomplished, to live in this life not according to the rules that the world lays down, although I would encourage obeying the traffic laws and things like that and tax codes and whatnot, but to not obey the rules of winner takes all, do for yourself and, and to heck with your neighbor, to not live according to the rules of, of power and, and, and wealth and all of the other measures that the world imposes to let them slide off, to let them roll off of you like water off a duck's back, and to keep focused on that which is eternal. In this time where there is no direct influence working in and through the disciples, no direct influence working in and through the church, we are asked to remember that this is not our final home. This world is a ship for us, not the port of call. And although we need to take care of the ship as we sail and we need to give good attention to its running as any sailor would, we have our eyes fixed elsewhere. We have our eyes fixed heavenward. So that even as we seem pilotless, rudderless, Yet we are guided by the North Star. We are guided by Christ. We fix our eyes where he has gone, knowing that we will follow, knowing that that kingdom will be realized, and doing our level best to live it in the here and now and not measure ourselves by the world. There is so much pain that we could allow to cloud us, but there is so much glory and so much beauty and so much hope and so much love and so much grace which can draw us. So we live in an in-between time. We always have, we humans, made for heaven but living in this world. We live in the in-between. Jesus' ascension draws our attention heavenward. It draws our hope heavenward. It draws our hope to the kingdom that will come. In this in-between time, let us be faithful. Look for the coming of the Spirit in our lives, in whatever form that takes. And hope. And trust. Trust the one who ascended that he will return. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please stand.
let us profess our faith, as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. That our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory that isolated and persecuted churches might find fresh strength in the Easter Gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Kill us, Lord of glory. That he may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter, let us pray to the Lord. Kill us, Lord of glory that by his power, wars and famine may cease through all the earth, remembering especially Ukraine, Afghanistan, Myanmar, Ethiopia, and all places of conflict on this earth. Let us pray to the Lord, yes, that he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, the dying, those who mourn, that they may be comforted and strengthened. We remember Maeve, Mark, Marjorie, Mark, Leah, Cheryl, Jan. And we remember the community of Valde in Texas. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, that he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.